My name is Jim Davis, the fire chief of the Canby Fire District, and welcome to the 911 uh, Memorial 15th year anniversary. Uh, at this time, I would like uh, to call on Lauren Darst from the Maxburg Lutheran Church for our invocation. Lauren? Let us pray. O creator of all 15 years ago at this hour, our world was changing. Hearts were broken. Loved ones were lost. And hatred seemed to be winning the day. But here 15 years later, we pray that your healing power would come into this world more mightily than ever, that your love might heal our brokenness. We give thanks for all who worked to save countless lives on that day, September 11, 2001. We thank you for their sacrifice, for their passion, and for their will to do what was right. We grieve all who were lost that day, innocent men, women, and children, first responders, random heroes. And we pray as we remember them in the tragedy of that day, that their work and their lives might not be in vain. And so as we face the future, we pray that you would drive out hate with your perfect love. Bring that love into each and every one of our hearts. And anywhere there is hatred anger, or fear, be with us to turn us around to live in love. Again, O oh Lord, we thank you for those who have made this world a better place, and we pray that you would help each and every one of us do the same. Amen. Thank you. At this time, could I have you please all rise? We are now going to have the presentation of uh, colors. They'll be starting over here and going over to this uh, location. Uniform personnel, attention. Salute the flag. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
uniform personnel at ease. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to call on Mark Welk. Uh, Mark is an Eagle Scout from Scout Troop 62. Uh, Mark uh, was inspirational along with the Maxburg Lutheran Church. Of uh, Today we get to dedicate this beautiful walkway as well as a bench that has been put in. Uh, and so with that, I would like to call on Mark. He has a few words he'd like to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Woe. Thank you for coming out today in honor of the people who died on this day 15 years ago. The walkway, bench, and plants came about when a person from the fire station asked if I would be willing to help add to the memorial for an Eagle Scout project, I said yes. I am honored to present to you the walkway, bench, and various plants to and trees, sorry, this day in memory of 9-11. I call this the reflection place. Just like all the volunteers who donated their time to help rescue the survivors, I want to thank all the many volunteers who spent time in helping me complete this project. I also want to thank all the people who donated money or supplies towards this project. Max Burton Lutheran Church, Owls Garden Center in Sherwood, Withers Lumber in Wallala. Home Depot in Oregon City, Camby Santa Gravel, Camby Rental and Equipment, and the people who did the want people who did the pipe work. Yeah, for the bench. Sorry. I'm not. Without all the volunteers and donations, this project would not have been possible. So once again, thank you. I also want to thank the Canby Fire Station for trusting in me to lead this project. In the many days, weeks, months, and years to come, May many people use this walkway and bench as a place of reflection and to pay their respects to the lives that were lost but not forgotten. As written by Matty J.T. Stepanek, Unity is strength when there is teamwork and cooperation. Wonderful things can be achieved. Let us stand united as one to keep this country safe. Thank you.
Okay, at this time we're going to have the unveiling of the sign for the work uh, that Mark and the Boy Scout troop uh, completed. I'm going to ask Mark to go over there and join Jason Warner, Firefighter Paramedic Jason Warner. Let's give him a hand again. Again, welcome to the 15th anniversary to remember those firefighters, police officers, airline crews, military, and civilians that lost their lives on September 11, 2001. Thank you to the citizens of Canby, to the dignitaries, uh, and visiting guests for coming today. Isn't this a beautiful morning? This is absolutely beautiful. I would also like to take, thank, again, thank uh, Mark uh, and Boy Scout Troop 62 and the Maxburg Lutheran Church for the wonder, wonderful walkway and path. You know, every day my office sits right there. And uh, it, the, the memorial is visited on a regular basis. So it's going to be wonderful to have that bench for people to be able to sit on and uh, take time uh, to uh, enjoy the memorial that we have set up. On September 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day uh, defined a generation. September 11, 2001 has indelibly shaped who we are, how we live, our lives, and what we believe in. But unlike Pearl Harbor, in which one nation attacked a military installation, this time an organization of terrorists, not operating under the flag of a nation, attacked thousands of innocent men and women. Many of us here today learned about Pearl Harbor in our history classes. Did you know that today, what happened on September 11, 2001 is now being taught to our students in schools, if you really think about it, they're now 15 years old. And they're reading about this in their history classes. Just yesterday, this last week, I was watching the news and they were talking about the numerous kids that are 15 years old that never had the opportunity to meet their uh, parents. And they're living life and uh, being told about the events that took place that day. Our sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, husbands and wives, co-workers and friends were doing nothing out of the ordinary that typical Tuesday morning on September 11th. Firefighters, police officers were just arriving to work and getting ready for the day. People were boarding their flights, pilots were going through their final checkoffs, and people were arriving at, uh, to work at the World Trade Towers, the Pentagon, and they were boarding Flight 93. Those people had no idea what was about to happen. They had no ill will towards others. They were just going about their day, doing hard work for their families. Here's just a few facts as a remembrance of 9-11. 19 men hijacked fuel-loaded U.S. commercial airlines bound to the West Coast destinations. A total of 2,000 977 people were killed in New York City, Washington, D.C., and outside of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The attacks were orchestrated by uh, Osama bin Laden from Al-Qaeda. The victims of the World Trade Center site in Lower Manhattan, there were 2,753 people killed when hijacked American Airline 11 and United Flight 70, uh, 175 were intentionally crashed into the north and south towers as a result of the crash. 
Of those, of those perished during the initial attack, the subsequent collapse of the towers, there are 343 firefighters, 23 police officers, and 37 Port Authority officers uh, that were killed that day. The first fire department representative that was killed that day was Father Michael Judd. Father Judd was uh, giving last rites to a firefighter that had been hit by debris and which at the same time he was hit with debris and was carried away from the scene by fellow firefighters. The victims ranged from age two to 85 and about 75 to 80% of them, of the victims were uh, males. At the Pentagon, 184 people were killed when the hijacked American Airlines 77 crashed into the building. Near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, 40 passengers and crew aboard United Flight 93 died when the plane crashed into the fields. It is believed that the hijack crashed, crashed the planes in that location rather than uh, the unknown target. After the passengers and crews had taken con attempted to take control of the flight deck. As of August 2016, 1,640, or about 60 percent, of the 2,753 victims' remains have been positively identified, according to the medical examiner's office. I just want to take just a moment of silence to remember those victims. Thank you. All of you, you here today will remember what you were doing that day. I know I do. We know uh, we now have to explain to our children and some of our grandkids what happened that day. I know for me at times I find it hard to rationalize what is going on in the world today. We have political parties that find it difficult to work together. We have athletes that won't stand for the national anthem. We have cultural differences that have raised their ugly head, and we have people that are being killed for religious beliefs throughout the world. Yet we as Americans are fortunate to have our freedoms unlike any other country, and that's what we stand for. But with that said, it is our way of life today, our way of life that embraces freedom and democracy, our way of life that rewards hard work, encourages selflessness, and generosity, our way of life that allows us for varying opinions in society and still preserves our right to express our opinion, our way of life that allows us to worship freely and to look differently. And I truly believe God has a plan. The United States remains the most desirable place on this planet to live, and thank God for our freedom. Thank you to our military personnel and to our veterans that have given their lives and served our country. Let's give our veterans an applause as well. The American spirit will continue to reach out to help others, even in times of unthinkable crisis and unfathomable odds. Just think about the police and firefighters who rushed into the burning towers that day, knowing that they will be losing their lives saving others. And today, think about the countless hours spent by others rebuilding the World Trade Center, Tower One, which is a beautiful structure. That is the American people's resolve our American spirit is defined as our ability to rebuild and move forward. Just this year, look at the natural disasters that have happened around the country. As we speak, the flooding, the man-made disasters, uh, the hurricanes hitting the Florida area, and the American people just continue to rebuild. We Americans are steeled by our legacy of determination and resolve. As we leave here today, let us never forget what happened on September 11th 2001, and always maintain respect, liberties, and freedoms that we have today. God bless America.
At this time, I'd like to call on the uh, Canby Police Chief, Brett Smith. Where are my sunglasses here? There's a secret. There's readers in them. I'll need them. Today, September 11, 2016, uh, marks the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Today we have the opportunity to pay tribute to the many people who have been killed by terrorists at home and abroad, but for today especially to those who died in the attacks of September 11, 2001. In part, the events of 9-11 is a time in my memory that we as a nation stood together. We were unified when we were faced with a new sudden and unexpected challenge. Those who lost their lives and the real heroes of the Twin Towers, Flight 93 and the Pentagon, communicated to us that living courageously is not about being tougher than someone else or being immune to feeling afraid in the grips of a perceived danger. Neither is it about overcoming fear, but instead about responding in the face of it. It has been said that adversity introduces us to ourselves. In part, their legacy is that of encouragement and hope. Their legacy reminds me that ordinary people within a moment can decide to be extraordinary, that my actions make a difference and we're not alone. Today, as we remember those who lost their lives, let us also remember how they modeled courage. It is the knowledge and belief that each of us has the ability to act in an extraordinary manner despite the apparent danger, and that our actions have an opportunity to offer lessons to others of hope that such courage can be lived out in each of our lives every day. This year, as our nation prepared again to recognize the events of 9-11, I had the opportunity to listen to radio stations that broadcasted several commentaries as told from the survivors of 9-11. While their experiences or stories differed, their message was remarkably similar. They spoke of hope out of the ashes. Hope because the events of 9-11 caused them all to reflect on something very similar, the brevity of life, recognizing the value of relationships, asking the question, what is it that I cherish? What has true value? what is worth pursuing and what or where is my focus in life? And finally, what am I thankful for? At a personal level, their legacy should also help shape how I live my life and the days ahead. I ask the question, am I investing in the lives of my family and others, building relationships that impact others in a positive way? Do I think about how fragile and brief life can be? Today, 9-11 takes place on Sunday, normally a day set aside to rest and to recognize, praise, and worship God. So I think it also appropriate to ask, what about eternity and my relationship with God? Today as I close and as we remember those who lost their lives, let us also look to today and to the future and ask ourselves, what am I going to do with my life that best honors those who lost those to the events of 9-11? Thank you. I'd like to now call on uh, Mayor Brian Hodson from the city of Canby. Mayor. Good morning. Thanks. I don't think we could have asked for a better morning than this. I wish I could say I dialed this up, but I can't do that and won't do that. Uh, I just want to take a moment and thank all of you for being here today on this uh, very important day. Uh, thank you to our first responders and our, our firefighters and our paramedics and our police officers that keep us safe in our community. And thank you to the fire district for continuing to organize this event every year uh, and making it a part of our community. 
I am awed in the fact that it has been 15 years that have passed. Uh, this day and the events of this day still get me very emotional. I will always remember the events of that day. 15 years ago, I woke up to my roommate watching the first tower engulfed in flames. I'm watching this wide-eyed and still groggy, not really comprehending what was going on. At the time, I was a store manager for Starbucks Coffee Company, and I was to teach a training class that morning in Northwest Portland. I did not want to leave my TV. I would run around the apartment, I'd dart back from the bedroom to the bathroom every time, pausing to see what else was going on on TV, what was I missing. I even think I changed and brushed my teeth in front of the TV. 15 years ago, in a state of shock, not sure of how or of what, the second plane plummeted into the second tower. And all I can let out is an, oh my God. 15 years ago, I ran from my apartment to my car so I could turn on the radio and continue to follow what was happening. When I arrived for the training class, I was notified that the class was going to be canceled and that we were going to be closing all the stores company-wide. Everyone that showed for class had the same stunned, wide-eyed look that I knew I was feeling and had on my face. 15 years ago, I raced from my canceled class back to my store. I must have called my now wife, Meg, a dozen times already that day. I hugged my employees and the customers that were there. I remember posting the sign in the front window announcing that we were gonna be closing so that all the partners could go home and be with their family and friends that day. The next day we opened. I think I was running on just a couple hours of sleep as were my partners and my customers, but there was a difference. 15 years ago, the difference was we looked at each other differently after this attack. We maybe saw that human condition for the first time in a while that maybe we were missing the humanity in all of what was occurring and had occurred. We saw the pain and the loss in each other. We saw the happiness and the good times in other people's lives. It was no longer about what happens elsewhere around the world. It has happened here. 15 years ago, as we as a nation were rattled to our core. 15 years ago, we saw each other differently and we realized how the magnitude of this event the loss of 265 lives on four planes, 125 lives at the Pentagon, 343 firefighters, 37 Port Authority officers, and 23 police officers, 2,997 lives lost. The magnitude of this should make us be different to each other. 15 years ago, the days, weeks, and months show that we can treat each other with respect and dignity that we as America are stronger together as one, not broken into many different parts. 15 years later, do we have concern for the human condition? Are we one nation under God, indivisible? As we remember and never forget with Facebook images and remembrance services like this today, and the feelings that this day emotes, let us please take a moment and think about the human condition and how we are stronger, better, stronger and better together when we care for each other. Thank you all very much for being here. Okay, we're blessed today to have uh, with us uh, Representative uh, Bill Kinnamer. Bill? I'll try that. Good morning. Good morning. It is a great morning, isn't it? Isn't it great to be an American? Isn't it great to be an Oregonian and a Canbian and all the things that we are? Uh, and uh, as Sigmund Freud once said, there are no accidents. These things are the result of Americans pulling together and making this a great nation. What a great nation we have. We thank God for that. Uh, you know, and I thank you for the honor of uh, making a few hours remarks here. You weren't listening, were you? 
You know, it's important, uh, I think, to take time to remember. And to take time to remember because we need to learn from our past, lest we repeat the errors of the past and we don't make our home and our futures and the futures of our families better. You know, we've already talked about on the 15 years ago and in the early morning hours, some 2,997 folks perished and how transient life can be. And I remember it was a couple of days later that President Bush stood, I still remember seeing the image of him with the megaphone in his hand, as he said, the people who took down this building will soon face our wrath. A harsh, a strong statement. And I guess as I've reflected on that across the years, I've thought accountability, whether in our family or our local communities or internationally or our nation, helps stop meanness and irresponsibility. And that's some of the lesson that we need to learn here. You know, some other things, we've had lots of data, but I ran across a piece of, a couple of pieces of just sort of interesting, almost trivia, and yet it helps us understand the almost incomprehensibility of this. It took firefighters 100 days, 100 days, to put out all the fires that were ignited by the 9-11 attack in New York. 100 days, they didn't get it out within a couple hours. 100 days. And the cost of cleaning up 100, and, uh, excuse me, cleaning up 1.8 million tons of debris, it was about $750,000. Oh yeah, and that doesn't deal with the mess at the Pentagon or those, those heroic citizens on that flight that brought the plane down in Pennsylvania instead of somewhere would have, where it would have done so much more harm. And yet they sacrificed their lives for us and, and the people that were saved. I think uh, it's been pointed out by the previous speakers, all of us remember the morning of September 11th, 2001. I was at the county offices. I was your county commissioner in those days. And I found it virtually incomprehensible. It was beyond my grasp for quite a while, in fact, even to this day, to really come to terms with what I saw and what was happening to our nation, to our friends, to our loved ones, and to our sense of security. Somehow it didn't seem possible and certainly not possible in America. In its wake, a host of us, have, uh, all of us have had a host of experiences, and I'd like to share just several of mine. You know, I remember at the county, one lady frantically calling New York to try and talk to her brother, because you see, he worked in the Twin Towers. And I remember we were all feeling that agony as she kept calling and calling, and finally she got through, and he answered. And you know, there are certain miracles that are hard to explain. For some reason, he got up late that morning. And as long as he was late, he decided to stop by for a cup of coffee. Yeah, he missed it. I don't know why. It's pretty incomprehensible, but it was pretty miraculous and pretty amazing. And I don't know how those choices get made, but I know that they do. And there was about three weeks later, as your county commissioner, I traveled periodically to DC to talk with the legislators and their staffs about our needs. And I remember booking that flight to Washington, D.C. with fear and trepidation. And it was made a lot worse when Sherry and I boarded this United flight, and two-thirds of the seats were empty. I'd never been on a flight to D.C., and I'm not sure I ever have in my life, 
where it wasn't full and probably overbooked. And we had two thirds of the seat empty. And it was an amazing moment as uh, the pilot welcomed us on board. And he talked about the people in that previous United flight. And he told us, we are more than they. And if anyone attempts to divert this flight, we must respond. I still scared, but I felt better. And I remember, too, we arrived at the hotel. And this is a big place, lots of rooms, lots of stories. Less than two floors were open. They'd been closed for the better part of three weeks. And I talked to the baggage man, and he was very eager to take our bags. I, you know, cheap Republicans, I usually handle them my own. But somehow I just felt like, yeah, you know, and I let him carry our bags up. And as we went up the elevator some 14 floors to a nearly empty place, he was talking about he'd been off work for three weeks and he hadn't had any income. And I realized that I could do something small at that point. And I gave him a very substantial tip, something that's pretty uncharacteristic for me. Very substantial tip. Oh, and instantly, I didn't put it on my expense account. <laughs> I say that to say this, that during that time, our hearts were touched. Our minds, our minds were touched. And our souls were touched. And it was a touch that lasts for, I think, all of us to this very day and likely will last the rest of our lives. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share just a few more thoughts from my 35 years as a clinical psychologist. I remember I used to talk to people about some incredible things. You know, incredible tragedies, incredible problems, <laughs> once in a while fabulous joys too, by the way. It's not always bad. But we talked about a lot of different things. And I remember one of the things that I used to tell people as we face these challenges is we can either go through life or we can grow through life. Let me repeat that. We can go through life or we can grow through life. And I think these 15 years, and as they continue into the future, offer us the opportunity to either go through it or to grow through it. And I think there's a growth process all of us could benefit from. Another thing is, as I would talk with people about these difficult times in their lives, I would often say, because it was always awkward, I mean, there aren't explanations for the unexplainable or for the impossible or the unbelievable or whatever it is. And in that awkwardness, I found myself saying often to people, God should have hired me as a consultant. Because if he had, the world would be flat and only good things would happen. And at some level, that kind of makes sense to me, you know? It seems like that's the way the world should have been built. Flat, and only good things happen. But you know what? That's not the world all of us experience. Some tragedies occur. And the question is, are we going to learn and grow through these hard times? Or are we just going to get through them? Hopefully, we're going to grow and learn. Today, I want to encourage us all to renew our commitment to leave the world a bit better. Yeah, most of us are not going to stop the hatred of ISIS and the murderings that are going on internationally. And most of us, like our hero Tyrone Woods out of Oregon City, who gave his life in Benghazi, we're not going to have 
that wondrous and awful opportunity to give our life for the benefit of others. And most of us won't be able to create world peace, but we can do our small part. And in certain ways, we can be small, local, huge heroes. I'm talking about the school teacher who comes alongside the troubled student, or the parents who devote themselves to their children, or the fire and the police who always put others before themselves, or the business person who sacrifices a job or sale over ethics, or the one helping a friend deal with cancer. Yes, and what about those who pray for others, or wrestle with handicaps, or fight addictions, or work at two jobs to make ends meet, or those caring for ailing parents, those sharing joys and enduring agony. All of us doing those little big things that make the world, America, and can be a little better. And I think that's the challenge, is to learn and let's figure out how each of us can live and make, can be, and the world a little bit better. And with that, I say, may God bless you, and may God continue to bless America on this 15th anniversary of September 11th. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kenimer, uh, for coming today, Mayor Hodson, Chief Smith. Um, at this time, we're going to uh, have the ringing of the bell. Uh, I would like to, at this time, uh, have you please stand. And I'd like to call on Division Chief Matt Dale. Color Guard, please take your position for the sounding of the bell. The men and women of today's fire service are confronted with a more dangerous work environment than ever before. We are forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our tasks. Our methods may change, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past, to save lives and, prop and to protect property, sometimes at a terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is the tradition of a firefighter. The fire service today is ever-changing, but is steeped in traditions 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of a bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow citizen. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled to all the completion of that call. When a firefighter had died in the line of duty, paying the supreme sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols which reflect honor and respect on those who have given so much and have served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls had for their duty, a special signal of three rings, three times each, represents the end of our comrades' duties so that they will be returning to quarters. And so, to those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their tasks completed, their duties well done, to our comrades, their last alarm, they are going home.
That concludes our presentation today. Again, I would like to thank all of you for coming today. I would like to also uh, thank the firefighters and police officers that are here today as well. And please join us uh, for refreshments in the Bay, and let's get, just get to know each other. Thank you very much.